Hello and welcome to a recap of today's Live Code Hangout. Today we've been working on the Companionship Care app. If you'd like to check out this code, it's open source on GitHub at github github.com slash companionship care. We've been working on a feature to delete scheduled activities. Essentially this Companionship Care app allows caregivers to kind of coordinate activities that are meant to enrich uh, a person's life and that person may need some assistance with day daily activities such as housework or doctor's appointments, running errands and of course they want to go out and, uh, for tea and things like that. And the idea is that uh, some companions can come together as a group, a companionship circle you could call it, and um, help to divide up the tasks for a particular person in need who may be living at home and uh, just somewhat isolated. So this kind of idea came out of uh, uh, as a response to COVID and also um, my personal experience and, and that of my uh, some close friends who've got um, loved ones in similar situations where they're living at home largely independently but still need some basic help with certain types of activities. And the idea is that you schedule activities and people can join those and uh, you can add other caregivers to join them as well remove and things like that and mark it as complete and edit them so you can change the type or date things like that and one feature that was missing was the ability to delete so today we just added that feature real quickly you know not everything you schedule uh, happens and uh, sometimes you make plans and you need to cancel them so made sense to add a deletion feature here. Uh, it wasn't too many lines of code overall. Most of those other features I mentioned uh, have been under development and if you're curious more about the project again we're on github.com slash companionship care. But here's the uh, lines of code that we needed to change in order to add the delete scheduled activity feature. So I'm going to kind of go top to bottom but what we've done is created a view and map that to a URL in our activities apps. So you go to delete and then the activity ID and it renders that view. The activity delete view is inheriting from the Django base view and it also includes user passes text test mix in which will allow you to run some arbitrary code to make sure that the user who's making a request to this view has, you know, is authorized to do so. And our test function it checks that the person making the request is one of the care organizers. Only the person's care organizers can delete the activity. The person here being that focal point of care where the care group is oriented around a single person. It's person-centric care. So we grab the activity by we've passed in from the URL as I showed up here, the activity ID. And we just get that out of the um, URL and we assign it to self.activity. Self here is referencing the view. So we fetch the activity from the activities table and we're going to check that the user who's making that request is uh, a member of the activity person organizers. So the activity that we're looking at has a related person being the, again that focal point of care, person centric care. And that person has some care organizers. So I actually might rename this to care organizers or care coordinators. I have another task to do that um, to kind of like solidify uh, the language in this project so it's consistent. But these are care organizers. So it's like, you know, one or two people who are coordinating more, like a broader um, group of people who are willing to participate but maybe not take the initiative to coordinate everybody. You can have multiple organizers though, coordinators. And essentially, since I'm checking that they can delete the activity, I just aliased it here so that if they're an organizer, they can delete the activity. That way it's kind of explicit what I'm trying to check for. And another um, user passes test mix in, uh, you could be an organizer or a participant in the activity to edit the activity, for example. And so if they do pass this test function, then it'll go ahead and process. This is a post. Uh, request that's coming across um, from when you initiate or submit. This is actually a form 
we'll see in a minute when you initiate that request with the delete it'll post to the URL of this view and since in this user passes test mix and we grab the activity and assign it to self.activity we can now uh, reference it here that that saves us another database call so hence I assigned it to this self otherwise you know if we weren't going to reference this activity again then I wouldn't have needed that step I'm not sure how much um, we're saving and doing that but you know less is more so let, fewer times you have to look you know something up by ID it's maybe a little bit more efficient and basically we get the person ID from the activity and this doesn't have to be in this order and then we delete the activity so it might actually if I have this self act, if I call this self activity delete then I would no longer be able to get the person ID so come to think of it it's probably required that I grab the person ID there and assuming everything would go well here uh, I didn't write any kind of uh, try catch but um, we'll redirect to the person detail view for that person ID so you notice that when I delete an activity it feels like I never left this page and that's because it's redirecting me back to that page from the view it happens instantaneously on my local machine and not too it's not too big of a performance uh, we're, we've deployed it to the cloud these particular types of operations I haven't deployed this branch yet and uh, essentially we've got two other parts the template uh, two parts in the template one is uh, this activity card was getting a bit busy and so I needed a way to allow more actions but not clutter things up and detract from the from the really important things like showing that this activity doesn't have any participants and allowing you to manage them and market is done so we just added a new button with a drop down here that has these actions this action button so that's essentially what we do and this is reg just regular bootstrap 5 semantics so you define a button group and you put buttons in there uh, you put a button in there that toggles the drop down and then an owner ordered list with list items that uh, essentially are the items in that uh, drop down menu you don't have to give them any particular classes they happen to be buttons uh, and this is where you needed to class uh, their classes drop down items uh, we didn't need to add that on the list item itself and it seems to render fine from what I can see it looks decent to me so one of them was a button that we already had the edit activity and both of these toggle a modal and that modal um, is rendered once for each uh, activity so actually this template is starting to get pretty heavy there's a there's two modals re rendered basically for this um, one activity when I add another activity two more modals get rendered uh, so I'm gonna have to figure out a more efficient way of doing this but it's uh, basically the same thing with the um, confirmation for the delete activity we have another modal down here called the confirmation modal, modal and we'll take a look at that at that in just a moment Oh, one thing is since we have this rule here this uh, user passes test that they have to be a care organizer we want that to be reflected in the user interface as well so only the care organizers should really be able to see this button even let alone call the the URL to make the uh, to delete the activity so that way the user interface is again consistent with the behavior of the back end and here's the modal dialog this is again just regular bootstrap dialog we faded in it's called delete activity confirmation modal you'll notice that each modal is um, uniquely keyed and again these are like you have 10 activity uh, scheduled activities here you'll have 20 modals at least and so it's kind of a mess and that's one of the things I need to figure out is how I can parameterize this so I have just one of each modal rendered and then pass in the data rather than rendering that on the server and sending it over the wire uh, but i've been very light on the javascript but this is one issue uh, where i think it'll be it'll pay dividends to have a little bit of javascript here not a whole front-end framework by any means but a little bit of uh, javascript can improve the user experience so i'm not a, averse to using javascript i just don't want to commit to a whole front-end framework and build tool and all that kind of stuff that 
and having to write API endpoints and things like that. It's just way too much complexity for this style of project. So we've got uh, some UI text. All of our texts we're trying to internationalize. So you can delete the activity. It prompts you, are you sure about that? And then it has a form embedded that calls the activity delete view by, and passes in the activity ID. So pretty standard uh, Django form and processing stuff. We're actually not even, it's not really, Django's not handling this form. It's just, we're using it so it can post to the server actually. And again, that gets posted here to this view. That's the activity ID argument. And that comes in mapped from this view. And that's called the activity delete view. And that's where we use it here. So just wiring everything up pretty much. It's not a lot of a bespoke code. You know, we're just really using bootstrap classes and really basic Django templating syntax. One other thing I noticed is that there is on the person detail page, a button that allows you to edit the person and only the care organizer really has that privilege. Anybody else will get an authorized error. So that was an example of the user interface being out of sync with the way the backend behaved. And so I thought I would just clean that up since I'm in the code right there and already in the mindset. So not a lot of um, lines of code. Uh, took some figuring out, but uh, mainly just reading some documentation and a bit of trial and error. So that's about it. Thanks again for watching. Uh, stop on by GitHub if you've got any questions or comments. And there's also several low-hanging fruit tasks that are good for good first issues. And we'd appreciate some help. Uh, I might register this project with Hacktoberfest as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again for your time. And I hope you're doing well.